Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as promised, here is day two of my visit in New York City where we got a private tour of the greenhouse at the New York Botanical Garden in the Bronx. So the first part of this video is the tour of the greenhouse and the second part is a Q&A with some of my plant friends that I met along the way. Um, just a disclaimer, there was an echo during the Q&A and while I was editing, I could barely understand myself and hear myself clearly and that's because I was speaking fast and I'm still mumbling and my enunciation of words and diction is just so poor. Uh, I really do need to practice more of that. Marble Queen Pothos, Ficus Elastica Tineki, Pelia Pepper Romeotis, or a Chinese money plant, Ponytail Palm, ZZ Plant, or everywhere else besides the US, ZZ Plant. I'm just kidding. Calico Cat, Nemo. Subscribe. In any event, I gave myself some subtitles so that way you guys can clearly understand uh, some of my questions with these guys. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the plant friends though, however, even with the echo, they speak really nice and clearly because I can hear them and I can understand it. So uh, I, they didn't need subtitles, but uh, I had to put some on, on, on me. But uh, then I'm excited to share with you guys the plants I came across during the tour. Unfortunately, because I was so excited being around all these plants that I didn't get a chance to catch all their names. Uh, but that's okay because you guys know their names and uh, I know most of you guys out there because I see it in my comments either on my Instagram feed or on my YouTube videos that a lot of you guys are uh, extremely knowledgeable of these plants uh, you know like I'm still learning and I'm just sharing kind of my experiences uh, through obviously uh, my, my feed here but uh, uh, yeah if you guys do recognize the plant and the name of it uh, comment below name that plant and the timestamp and share with the community without further ado let's get this tour started in Q&A hopefully you guys enjoy it and I'll see you guys after So this one, this one is just waking up. So this leaf has been emerging and growing at several inches a week. Uh, and eventually obviously get taller, unfurl. This one here is just starting to wake up. And when you can see, 
the new growth just emerging in here. So underneath there is a 70 pound tuber. Uh, and that came from that one leaf that you showed us before. That one leaf. So here's the tube. There's the leaf just beginning to emerge. limestone to it, it does help. It is incredibly slow growing and designing and I know one of my challenges or most of uh, the, the plant people is 
a lot of plants in their home. What's kind of your advice or tip when it comes to just keeping it organized? What would you say? Well, since I do live in New York and the average apartment here is just like <laughs> two by four closet, it's yeah. impossible to have. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. So um, the best little tip of advice I can recommend is to get them up off the floor because floor space in New York is just like gold and mm -hmm. you can't really get more than like one or two larger statement plants, but you can hang a lot of vining plants, you can put shelving in, any way that you can get the plants up off the floor and allow them to grow as they will. Nice. Yeah. Cool, cool. You guys don't need, you don't need any tradition with this, so come on, you was in the last video yesterday. Farmer Nick, obviously, come on, tell me. Yes, Farmer Nick NYC, uh, you know, it's sort of made it my mission to empower people with the knowledge and confidence they need to sustainably create their own green spaces. Uh, I live at this intersection of agriculture and plants, and I feel like plants are a stepping stone to sustainability, so I can get you to care about a plant, I can get you to care about the world. So that is the mission, and that's what we're working on. Awesome. Mark. And last but not least, Mark Hatchadorian, uh, Orchid Mark, on Instagram, uh, author of Orchid Modern, and one of the curators here at the New York Botanical Garden. So I'm a professional plants person, a professional plantsman. So my job here at the garden as one of the curators on staff and our resident orchid expert is to also teach people about the importance of global plant biodiversity. Not only connecting people with plants through beauty, but also educating them about the importance of plants and everything from scientific research to medicines, you name it. So I have an incredible and really amazing job in which I get to share amazing plants with people like yourselves, like we did in the greenhouse tour, uh, and create beautiful displays in our conservatories year round. It's so. awesome. And I mean, it's, it's obvious that uh, you know when you were speaking to us about just about the plant you were, you know, you were holding, you can just hear the passion and, and the knowledge. And even I myself was overwhelmed with like, wow, I had no idea that that even <laughs> happens to plants or whatnot, right? So I mean, with you guys, what was your favorite part of the tour? Um, the warm? I, 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 well, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely the warm. It was like freezing all half the half time. But um, I mean, I guess just I was really inspired with just the, the diversity that's here at the greenhouse. So, like, yeah, you get to see a lot in the conservatory, but just like all, I guess, behind the scenes of like what's here. Um, and then actually just like listening to you and just, yeah, I have to say, like, your knowledge and passion, like, it's it can be very overwhelming, even like as, as plant people, just like the Latin names of, of some of these, and just like kind of where they come from. Um, I was interested about a lot of like, especially with the um, miracle berries, just like the chemistry behind it. Anything that's like kind of that you can relate back to the science of the plants as the chemistry teacher. I just find that very interesting, and um, just how plants are a big part of medicine, and just so many different. Um, uh, uses, thank you. Uses other than just decor in a house, right? Like, you know, it's really important. How do you talk together? Um, I'm a sucker for anthuriums, so I love <laughs> the little <laughs> anthurium cove. Um, yeah, I was the last one in there. Yeah, yeah. Shut the yeah, she, she pretty much has it like that. Like, you have to get her off of her body. I would have made that sacrifice for five more minutes, but um, yeah, it's really cool because um, I received from another um, New York plant person a bunch of little baby anthurium seedlings, and they're like my prized possession. So to see them go like this big, and I'm ecstatic about it, and to see them in their more mature form and just thriving is just always yeah. really satisfying. Awesome. Yeah. I think my favorite part was listening to Mark talk about the symbiotic relationships some of these plants have with the ecosystem. So we think of our plants oftentimes as singular plants, but they're part of a much larger group in nature. And to hear about a plant, I cannot pronounce its name, but the plant that re requires the gecko to come in and drink this red yeah. nectar, yeah. like yeah. that's unbelievable. Yeah. And geckos are not, lizards are not known as pollinators. Right. <laughs> so to hear that and how over time and also with the, uh, it was the Darwin orchid, yep. and how this moth, this crazy long tongue, and it's specifically there for that flower, was truly unbelievable. Awesome. Uh -huh. well, I have to say that one of my favorite things is sharing with you guys some of these incredible <laughs> stories of plants. No, it's the truth. Because the way I've always been taught is that we all grow up thinking plants just kind of sit there and photosynthesize. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, 
is that plants are active, reactive, and dynamic organisms. Mm -hmm. We know this by we see them grow, we see them evolve in our care and how they thrive, or not in some cases. But in, for me, it's every plant tells a story. Mm -hmm. Every plant has a bit of history or some fact about it that makes it unique, incredible, different, and that's part of the joy of being able right. to just take this tour today is to be able to share and kind of speak for them. Uh, that we were doing and having a lot of fun in the greenhouse. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Definitely awesome. Um, Mark, you mentioned um, that you know, growing up you didn't have um, the, the, the social media influence to be able to connect with other kind people. And, and uh, obviously, you know, it um, must have been tough to, to you know, be passionate about it and be, you know, like, like I know for me, I write about my habits. Like, I, I don't care, it's, like, it's my dog, it's my, you know, it's, it's my kids, right? So, um, and that now, you know, a time like this where social media is, is quite, you know, obviously um, um, uh, around. Um, how, how, how are you now connecting with more people? Like, are you, do you find like you, 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 you found a family or? or how, Absolutely. How you know, you know, I, I grew up around plant people. My, my parents were not plant people, but I was a member of an orchid society at 10 years old. And thankfully, through some incredible teachers who really took an interest in my interests uh, and helped me sort of connect with that and eventually develop a career. Uh, also, with a lot of orchid people that I grew up with who kind of really are truly my second family. But now, connecting with a lot of people through social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, it's really connected me with the most incredible group of people, young, old, everything, and all over the world, in which not only do we support each other, whether it be answering questions or identifying something that people see, but also giving that next level of support to help someone who may off be off in the middle of nowhere connect with a community of people who have the same interests and joys that they do in life. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, uh, number one tip for newbies. Oh, God. <laughs> don't overwater your orchids. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I say love your plants less. They can survive on their own. They've been doing it longer than we have. Love them a little less. Yes. <laughs> Understand your plants' needs. Each houseplant has its own specific light requirements, water requirements, soil requirements. If you just learn about the plant and do what it needs, it's really very simple from that point on. Right on. Um, know your light and understand your microclimate within your household and don't try to be too over ambitious at first. You know, go gradual, see how your green thumb emerges and what you're learning from it mm -hmm. and then build off that. I think it'll be really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, some of you guys have obviously known each other um, uh, for a while now and, and obviously connected through social media, but who would you say out of this group uh, has still the most plants? <laughs> <laughs> the expert! <laughs> well, not the oldest. <laughs> statement, don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. In growing plants, you can you know, get a cutting from a friend, try something, and then as you learn, it's like cooking. You know, the first cake you make never really turns out that great, but over time, practice and understanding, that's where you gain your expertise. That is, that is true. I mean, like, I always say that it, it, at the end of the day, it's just experience, right? So uh, when, when, you know, uh, when I killed a few plants, I was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to feel bad about it. Next time around, I'm not gonna kill it. Okay, third time around, I'm not gonna kill it. It's okay. It happens, but you know, I think that's a part, a part of the, the plant journey for most people, right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, uh, who here has the most plants? Sorry, <laughs> 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 maybe a couple thousand in there. I'm not saying they, those are my work plants, my home plants. I do have a greenhouse in my backyard. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, And have, so, do you know exactly the count? I'm curious now. I don't know if I should admit that on camera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> more, more than a hundred. Okay. Okay. Taylor. Um. Definitely over two hundred. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I stopped counting after that because yeah. I'm just going to do that also. Cool. Um, a lot of fun, guys. Uh, again, thank you so much, Mark, for having us. Thanks, Nick, for obviously hooking this up. I just visited New York and not knowing this is happening, uh, so I really appreciate it. But uh, what upcoming projects you got, 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 got going on right now? Anything you want to share with the audience? Um, upcoming projects? I don't really have anything. <laughs> 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 
keeping my plants alive. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, I'm on a, I'm on, I put myself on a plant ban for the month of February. Okay. okay. So I'm going to try and hold to that. I know people do dry January. I'm doing... <laughs> yeah, or something. No, no plants ever. And I'm going to Miami too, and I'm just like, oh. So, yeah. Taylor? Um, I'm definitely trying to get my YouTube series in order, at least on paper. Um, I have so many different ideas, I need to just hone in on one at a time. So, yeah. Excited. Okay. Okay. Well, if you want to, you know, if everyone invite me over, and we'll do. Oh my gosh! Oh my My mom will be so happy. She's like, oh, yeah. mom. <laughs> the long lost son. Yeah. There we go. Nick, upcoming projects. Uh, I just took on a pro bono project helping build a uh, farm, a little farm for a middle school in Brooklyn. Uh, they had outdoor space at Fort Greene Park that was unused. And one of the uh, facilitators and managers at the school contacted me and said, hey, listen, I found your Instagram. We don't have a lot of money. Could you help us build this farm for the kids? And How said, can you not love this guy? Come on. So come spring. First, we've got to get the soil tested okay. because in New York City, that is very important, especially when you're growing crops for people to eat. Um, so I'm really excited to take that project out in the spring. Awesome. Awesome. Mark? And me here at the garden planning our our installation is going on right now, the 18th annual Orchid Show here at the New York Botanical Gardens. But also looking towards a little bit further in the future and our upcoming exhibition about Yo-Yo Kusama, which is going to be really incredible. So a lot of things going on in the garden, but personally just planning for spring. Can't wait for that time to get outside and get into the soil and working on planning my spring garden. Get those hands so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Well, uh, Definitely, I'm coming back here for sure this spring and, and definitely this summer. I do want to check out what the outdoors look like. But uh, guys, I'll be providing a link on all their Instagram accounts, web pages in the description below. Definitely check it out and uh, follow my favorite time people right now. Thank you guys so much for having me and thank you for Bye guys. Bye. Alright guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that little tour plus Q&A with some of my plant friends and uh, I'll be honest, I really did enjoy my time out in New York and uh, I think I want to do a lot more of these videos where I go out, check out different cities, uh, meet other plant friends as well as check out their botanical garden or local plant shops and really showcase what other cities got to offer. So if you have any suggestions on which city I should visit to, comment below and let me know. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.